only been in the competition for five or six years, but um, Choco got a hold of that club after after Jack Cale and um, really grew the standards of the club. And Shawnee can talk about that in a minute. But um, yeah, when we when we came to Hawthorne, I'd always held Hawthorne in such high regard. I never played in a winning side against Hawthorne in a ten year career uh, because they were just the absolute uh, iconic side through the through the eighties and, and early nineties and. So I had them on a pedestal, but when I arrived at Hawthorne, our standards and that sort of stuff were well below what I had them, my expectations of them. Yet I'd just been to Port Adelaide that their expectations were just huge. So we just had to go right back to basics. And um, to be fair, it was, a, it was a pretty autocratic approach in the first one or two years that, no, this is the, these are the standards required and I drove it pretty hard. Uh, but once they understood the standards, that's when the Mitchells and the Hodges and the, and the Dixons and the Vandenbergs and these sort of guys carried the standards and the Crawfords um, the Croge, you know, there was a, there was a whole heap of guys that uh, accepted what the stand, new standard was, and then they just drove it, and uh, that helped us win silverware in 2008. And then we fell away a bit, and then Hodgie and those guys got it going again, and we we, uh, we had another period of success a little bit later. Go, right? <laughs> oh. Yeah. You know, I was, met Clark when he first came on board at Port in 2012, uh, no, 2002. Yeah, I think when he yeah. came on as assistant coach. So I think he's my line coach straight up, forwards coach. Um, and we were able to, to bond straight away. Um, and obviously, he, part of his role at the time was building bonds with players and, and making sure that, you know, we develop as players, but also people off the field. And then fast forward to when I come to Hawthorne, the same thing happened, although I was a bit older and we continued that bond. And like he said, um, you know, our families have become close friends and um, we've been able to continue on the journey. And um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice way to go out and, you know, with Clark on, on the same day. Sean, all your teammates say you, you never trained, but <laughs> you, you, did you just train smarter? Yeah, they, they like to, um, exaggerate things a little. <laughs> um, I do train um, and I do enjoy it, but it's more quality over quantity. Um, so obviously once I had the, the, uh, the serious knee surgery and serious ankle surgery and a uh, bit of wear and tear, the, the doctors really look after the players here. Um, the coaching group know exactly the, the players have been looked after and they never question you know the programs players are on because they know there's a lot of time and effort individualised programs, especially when you get 30 plus. Um, but yeah, you miss one or two little drills here and there, and you know, one extra rep on the end of preseason running, and they think you don't train, which is which is good. So uh, it's part of the footy banter. Have you seen, uh, like, his Alison develop as a pace sort of over the years? Have you feel he's still got a lot left to offer? Perhaps another club down the track? Yeah, well, he mentioned before that he's had to um, evolve with you know with the times, and um, obviously assistant coach at Port, and then he he gets the senior role, so obviously has to change there and become you know, the head guy and, um, you know, I think looking from afar when I first, when he first left and came to Hawthorne, he obviously had to change a few things and he was changing their game style and game plans. And um, then going forward, you know, obviously <laughs> he, uh, he had a lot of good players at his disposals where he can become a little bit more, exper you know, exp experiments, um, try experiments, sorry, with the playing group. But he'd always ask the playing group, you know, he'd go away to, to England and visit his, the soccer over there or come back and then sit down and say the playing group what do we think about this should we try this let's give this a crack and if it works in the first five or six weeks we'll stick with it if it doesn't we'll, we'll change and you know he's he's had those ideas he wanted to you know be um want to innovate the game plan and, and and take risks and I think it's no success no reason why uh, sorry there's no there's um it's not it's not um, strange to the players that we've had success because he's always been at the forefront of change and wanting to be the best and, and be the first to try change. So, um, though there was a few things we we probably questioned at the start. Um, <laughs> There's a few stuff up yeah, along the way. <laughs> along the way, but I think that's a part of the, the, the bond that he grows with the players, you know. And, um, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, you think you have more buy in when you involve the players in those decisions. You're coaching the ball, Devin. You think you've been a pretty tough year, but over the last month, what's super good? Yeah, obviously we didn't get off to the right start um, and then we got to the halfway point and, and again, like, like I always does, we have a, a, a review and see where we're going well and where we need to um, improve and we made some changes um, to the way we want to play and different things we do every year um, and, you know, we're finishing the year off a lot better and 
um, you know, we, we we wish you just we, we started that way, but you, you can't predict these things. And you know, but you know, we're we're finishing off nicely. Um, we still got one more game to go, and hopefully the players can take that into pre-season with a bit of with a bit of um, you know positive thinking that you know what they did in the second half of this year can help launch them into pre-season. So if, uh, if Marco bobs up in another polo in a year or two, <laughs> it's striking strange, do you think? <laughs> Um, I'm going to try and pull him out of retirement. <laughs> out of retirement. Um, I'm not too sure. Uh, we'll let, oh, I'll just let the big man, or the little man, um, <laughs> rest for a bit. He's going to take some time off and then uh, I think he's going to evaluate then, but yeah, we'll see, see what he does. Marco, I just ask you, obviously you talk about the relationships with you and all your time here, is there something after today that you're going to miss? Is it walking downstairs, walking past the Kennedy statue, is there a certain person? And what is it about? Yeah, well, um, I, I don't know because I haven't left yet. You know, that'll probably come in two weeks' time, four weeks' time, six months' time. You know, from what I can gather that other, from others that have left roles, it's um, it's when the team runs out the next year and you're no longer in charge of the team or you're no longer playing in the team that that's where the void seems to be uh, at its at its most significant. So um, I'm yet to experience that. So we'll find out somewhere down the track, but. I know uh, we've both given a, a hell of a lot to this footy club, and uh, but this footy club's given a hell of a lot to us too. It's uh, it's been a really, really strong, strong bond on both sides. But we're both, uh, even though it's a little bit uh, precarious, what's going to happen next for us both? Um, we're both really excited about what the next chapter might bring, and uh, and some of that chapter for me in particular. And I think the same for Sean. You know, it's it's uh, an enormous demanding role to play at the highest level or, or coach at the highest level for a long period of time. But, Part of that excitement for us both is just to have a spell for a little while, um, and just um, you know that 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 spell might be for uh, in my case for, might might be 12 months or two years, and it might be that it's forever. I don't know. Um, I need to get into the next uh, next few weeks and just see where it all all pans out for me. But um, we've loved our involvement with this this footy club, and and with prior to that with with Port Adelaide, we're both really really fortunate to be involved in in two great clubs that just fortunately for us um we've been involved in them at, at really exciting eras for both those clubs and um you know we've got both got great mates at, at at port adelaide um and we've obviously uh firmly entrenched some relationships here um at this club and that's that's probably the beauty of it you know we've, we uh we've, we've said all along um you know it's not a it's, it's not about uh, being rich in terms of what's in your bank account is being rich in terms of the way that you live your life and the relationships that you've got. And um, you know, we've got some great relationships with some people at both clubs that will be uh, everlasting for us. Will you rule out coaching at all next year? Do you think, Alistair? Is that something that's not on your horizon at all? Or yeah, no. Um, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm nearly a little bit embarrassed to, yeah. to talk about it, to be fair. Um, because um, whatever has been said in the last three or four weeks has changed so much, and it's nearly whatever, whatever you say, you just can't take it as take it as gospel. But my sincere intention right at this point in time, and has been for the last four to six weeks, now that I'm no longer coaching uh, coaching Hawthorne, I want to have a spell from the game and um, and just see what um, see what that rest will do for me. Whether it will uh, reignite some um, some real passion to get involved in the game again, or um, or actually take the opportunity to go overseas. Um, it's a little bit difficult at the minute, given the environment, of course, but uh, take the opportunity to go overseas and explore some things and do some things that my wife and I have never done before because we've been so heavily involved in footy um, and uh, and see where the next chapter of our life takes us. Um, well, I'm not looking. F yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, obviously the, the break. Um, I won't miss the skinfold tests or the time trials. <laughs> or, or eating lettuce for a whole <laughs> yeah, preseason. Yeah, I know. So I won't miss that stuff. But I, I will miss um, you know the, the change room stuff, the banter. You know those things, the preseason camps. You know we we're talking about it yesterday, where you get to bond and um, hang out with the players. So that's the stuff I will miss. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm unsure what the, the future holds in terms of. You know, I've got to replace the, the void that footy's going to leave. Um, you know, I've been, I've had a longer career than I expected. Um, I've got to transition, and um, I've uh, reached out to a number of ex-players who, who are mates, and just asked for their opinions and thoughts on 
um, what can I look forward to, some of the, um, the things I need to stay clear of and to try and um, make sure that my transition is as smooth as possible into life after footy. And um, yeah, I don't really know how I'm going to adapt to that. It's, uh, it's a bit nerve wracking, but also exciting. So we'll just see what happens. Yeah, um, more, yeah, Eddie's um, been through a lot over the last, well, yeah, through his playing career and obviously going through the, the, the Walker stuff with the, who's a, a close mate of his has been very, very stressful for him. Um, yeah, I've always um, tried to help in this area and tried to, to make clubs and the you AFL know, a better place and it's an ongoing um, fight and it's a, one that we're, the players are up for and um, we're going to continue to try and make, you know, the AFL and um, a better place, so you know it's it's not done and dusted by any means. And you know Eddie's um, on his own path now after footy, life after footy, putting those things into into place now as well. So we'll see how that goes. It's a... Yeah, um, yeah, I'm just working through now what life after footy um, details for me entails for me. So um, we're still working through that. So we'll see. I think the uh, it's a pretty good story, isn't it? Like two kids from Mallee Park. Um, playing their last game in the same round, uh, not against each other, but um, but I think I, I think we've all got to take as the, as the whole game now. Um, you know, if if this guy Eddie Betts, Adam Goods before these guys um, hasn't been able to get the message through strongly enough in this AFL platform yet, the AFL platform is a really powerful platform on social change, um, and uh, I think we all need to take up the. Uh, take up the role of responsibility. I said to our players yesterday when we were uh, acknowledging Sean's contribution to the game and to our club, um, you know, going back to Polly Farmer and Barry Cable um, and their influence on this competition, the most significant thing that's happened to our game in the last 50 years is that these guys have brought so much excitement um, and they've been able to educate us about their culture, the oldest culture in the land, uh, in the world, in fact, actual fact, and um, just how much it's enhanced our game and enhanced our society. Um, but it's up to, it can no longer be their own people that are trying to fight for their own cause. It needs to be all of us fighting for that. Um, and that needs to be worldwide, really. But we've right here in Australia, it's the most um, significant one that sits right in front of us of what we can do about it. And as an AFL code, we're going to try and push that as hard as we possibly can. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we played a game against Port Adelaide, in actual <laughs> fact, and, uh, when that. Campbell, Brown and Crody were, were playing with us. I can't remember what year it was, but we said, oh, this, this zoning and cluster's working okay for us. Let's, let's try it at centre bounces as well. So we're uh, <laughs> the centre bounce, no one was picking up an opponent, and Port kicked seven goals out of the centre bounce in the first quarter. <laughs> Wasn't going too well. Somehow we... We got it. We changed. We aborted at quarter time smartly, and uh, and got, somehow got ourselves back into the contest and won that game of footy. But um, listen, there's, you, you've got to you've got to take risks in in life, whether it's in footy or anything that you do in life. Um, and it's always uncomfortable because any risk um, is actually exploring change in in essence. And um, we're always prepared to be risk takers. I've I've had a lot of great people around me, whether it's you know David Rath and. And Chris Fagan and, and, and Brendan Bolton, Damien Harvick, Todd Viney, we always had a really great team of people that um, it was never ever, even despite the senior coach perhaps getting applauded, so it was always a team of people. Um, and we've still, we've still got it now, you know, um, with, uh, with Rob McCartney and, um, and, and Chris Newman and Sam Mitchell and the, the coaching group that we got here together, it's all, it's all about coming up with an idea and then exploring whether or not um, we, we think it can work. Um, now it hasn't worked too well in the last couple of years. That's why I've been shown the door, and it's time for, a, for time for some some a different sort of change to the club. And that's someone that passed the bat and um, take take the club in a little bit of a different direction. But our club has never been afraid of doing that, um, and we've never been afraid of doing that within the, within the club. So um, that brings uh, the opportunity for success, but it also brings the opportunity for failure, and we've had both. Just on the quirky, the, the Kilda Shark was that the greatest ad lib? Your career, you know, yeah, well, as Mick Martin calls him, uh, Jack Nail. Um, I think, uh, I think, I think Jake wrote an article in the paper that morning, that morning in the H, um, 
talking about this juggernaut of the, you know, Geelong would just have taken all before on that year. I think they'd only lost one game for the year against Collingwood. Um, and it was it was like this shark, you know, you had to try to stop it. So um, probably got Jake to thank for uh, for that analogy, but because um, I just I just jumped on it. I didn't, and that's quite often the, the case with coaches. You, It's not something that you plan on a Monday or a Tuesday for that particular game. Sometimes, oh, well, I do anyway, I'll allow it to I'll leave it till the last possible moment before I actually decide on uh, because there's so many things going on in the in the game that um, they don't want to push the message too hard too early and then something happened that that message is no longer pertinent so um, yeah you, you win some I've had some I've had some stinkers too mate <laughs> one, one about a, 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 an ice skating ice ballerina skating, yes. which uh, <laughs> Which I, I, I thought I thought was one of my best bits of work, and I'm engrossed with this video. And I turn around to address the players, and there there'd always been already been Chinese whispers that are that appalled with this uh, particular presentation that they said standing ovation. So as I turned to address them, they all stood up and you know taken the Mickey out of me that I <laughs> could uh, uh, could put something like that to them. But um, yeah, you have you have some wins and losses with it, but. Um, yeah, probably more losses than wins to be fair. <laughs> oh, that was uh, no, that that was back in the mid. Guerra and Hodge were the ones sitting in the back row, Hollywood Boulevard, we call it. Uh, all the all the big wigs sitting in the back row, and um, there's this Chinese whispers that said, "This this this is no book, no good." But let's give him a standing ovation anyway. So I said, "Get out of here, you blokes!" So, so yeah, didn't the message didn't hit home that one. Um, well, it's a difficult one. I mean, um, the, the, the media are a key reason why the game is such a popular, popular game. You know, we, uh, we as a club and, um, and the competition need you guys. I mean, broadcasting and the, the, is, uh, the most significant revenue stream for the game. So, um, we, we as a club need, and as a competition need to use the media as best we can to stretch to our tentacles to every different part of the, the continent, let alone the globe. Um, so there's a very, very important role for them, but there's also a very, very important role for, to not allow the outside noise to infiltrate what needs to happen within the walls of your footy club. And uh, sometimes the, uh, the outside media can be really good for a, um, uh, a club and a, and a particular player, and sometimes it can be, uh, be not so good. And so we try to keep a protective layer around our players because the reality of AFL footy is that this is a very, very tough game. Um, the reality of what happens in the media is there likes to be a lot of focus on the individual. Um, and so we try as best we can. It's not about the individual, whether it's in, whether you're in a family, whether you're in a church group, whether you're in a sporting club, whether you're in a business. Very, very often it's not about just one person. It's about a group of people. Um, yet when a story is promoted, it's usually about that one person. And we try as best we can uh, to keep reality with all our players' lives and those within our footy club that this is about team, it's about club, it's about giving to others. Um, and it's very, very little about the individual. And that's, a, that's just an ongoing, ongoing challenge. I've probably been overprotective in that sense of, um, but happy to be that way because I look at the, the product of the, the people that we bring through our footy club, whether it's coaches, players, administrative staff, volunteers, we see, the, we see the product that comes out at the other end. And we're very, very proud of who they become in terms of uh, men and women and uh, mothers and fathers and um, husband and wives, uh, we're really proud of the, the final product. I'm pretty worried about the pressure on the senior coaches that's going on at the moment. It's obviously always been that way, but are you a little bit concerned about what's going on at the moment? Um, oh, listen, it's a, it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough caper, and um, you know, at this at this footy club, once again, we, you know, the all all the focus seems to be on the on the senior coach when, uh, and when the. Uh, you have success, the plaudits come for the senior coach, and when you don't go so well, then uh, the daggers come too. When um, certainly within our, within our footy club, there 
There hasn't been a key decision made in football for the last 17 years that I've been involved in, unless it's been run by a football subcommittee. So that has never allowed the senior coach or anyone else in the organisation to take power over any individual significant decision in your football department. And that is, but that is, so it's a group of us. Um, and it's a, it's a shame in a sense that we haven't been able to um, um, get, get past the very fact that it's a group of people that are, that are, are you know, contributing to the success or otherwise of a footy club rather than just one. Um, and as much as we possibly can, we've tried to downplay the significance of the senior coach and just made it about a group of us, including what Shawnee said before, you know, when we're trying to make change and trying to ask how we should go and navigate the new path forward, let's include our players as much as we can in that. And, um, you know, so we try to do things uh, together as much as we possibly can, because as I've mentioned before, that's the way life is lived. Not, not, not having the crowd say goodbye to uh, on the weekend. Is that, is that verbal? Is it just like? No, that's just that's just the way that, way that it is. You know, we we there's one part of it where Shawnee and I are just really really privileged to still be involved in the game. You know, there's there's plenty of others. I just my heart just bleeds for those in the travel industry and those in the hospitality industry that are just this is getting ripped apart. Um, you know, it nearly nearly brings you to tears to see what's what's going on in other industries. And, you know, we're, we're, we're concerned that we can't have 30 or 40,000 at the MCG. I mean, geez, uh, we can't we can't be that precious. We're just enormously grateful that uh, we've got roles that can, in the in the view of, the, of our, our governing body, the AFL, feel like we've got a role to play for society by continuing to play our game and give some joy to people in some tough times. Um, if we can play some sort of small role in that, then we'll do that. And if that means um, empty crowds, empty stadiums, um, we'll do it. We're just very fortunate to be able to continue to do what we do. Sean, just sort of real quick, how many times sort of asked you about being an assistant coach or anything like that? Uh, no, not coaching. Coaching doesn't. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> you seem like a stunned to me. Like you said before, take some time away. But no, no, coaching doesn't interest me at, right at this point in time. Um, so I'll step away and um, go into some other role. But yeah, at the moment, something might change in the future. But for now, no, no, I'm catching. Right, thanks. 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 Thanks.